Is that a vintage shirt? It is. I bought this in a thrift store probably 15 years ago. <laughs> that, that is probably the most glorious shirt I've ever seen. Look at, he's he's ahead of the game. Look, <laughs> look, at, look at, at all the graphs he has. No, that's... <laughs> he's got a, so, he's got a, a radar, or a whatever, a satellite dish. It's live scope right there. Yeah. Randy Block would be so upset. Kind of looks like Randy Blockett, though. <laughs> it's pretty much the most magical shirt I've ever seen. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. We are just outside of Gainesville, Florida. I am with my bassin bud, Ted Lincoln, and we are in front of a little restaurant called The Yearling. We just got done a pretty sweet meal of some gator tail, as well as some free range venison, which was awesome. It's very good. We are going to go hit Orange Lake and do a little retro bassing today. Maybe break some bodies PB or at least catch some fish on some old school gold. So what's the story of the bass? You're supposed to guess the weight. Uh, you got to guess the weight? Well, I mean, nobody knows. That's the whole thing. It's like, it was mounted, not weighed. It's been there forever. I think it's about 18. I was going to say, that's got to be north of 18. I think that that's my guess, but I'd have to measure it. Does anybody know where it was caught, when it was caught? Is, is it a skin mount? I, it was caught here, and I think it is a skin mount. Ooh. It's been redone a couple times, but... Okay. It's from... That's not a small bass? No. <laughs> and they're still catching them almost that big out of here. Oh, two fifteens wow. this year. Both by uh, two women on the same day in the same boat. So here she is, the old sea nymph. My dad bought this brand new in 1986, and I've kept it going ever since. Kept Probably. it going. We did have a little tragedy this year, though. We did. We had the fire. We'll get more into that later. I'll give you some footage. So this is kind of its debut, even though I've, I've been fishing out of it since it's been back. There's one or two things left to, like, touch up, but it's almost 100%. But we've been waiting for uh, Chris to get down here and reveal <laughs> it on Retro Bassin. It was originally gray. The model up was blue, same as uh, Realistic Fishing's boat is a blue that's similar to this. And that was the next size up, the, like came with a 50 horse. This is the original Johnson motor as well. I've repainted and rebuilt that probably five times as well. Um, upgraded trolling motors, but still hand till. A couple electronics. Sounds like we got some thunder rolling in, but we're gonna <laughs> catch some bass out of the sea now. Ted and I are pulling up to spot number one, just on the other side of Orange Lake. Uh, definitely uh, blowing up a little bit, and I see like a giant gator in the background. He so already, I've got. He already went under. He already went under. He's, he's stalking us. <laughs> he, he, oh, he's stalking us. Perfect. <laughs> Did they normally think attack some bodies? Is it normally the guy in the front of the boat or the back of the boat that they bite? Uh, the tourist. The tourist. Perfect. What are you throwing? Spook Junior in the new baby bass color, but classic shape on my old 
<laughs> Bantam. Berkeley setup. I don't think I've I don't You're think I've made throw, a today. I don't I don't think I've made a cast with this reel since 1991. <laughs> oh, I'm sure the grease is still good. Oh, I lubed it up. <laughs> is that a Ber Berkeley lightning rod? It is not the lightning. It's the but phaser. It's a, but it's a Berkeley though, of some yeah, sort. Yeah, okay. with the the fake wood. Oh yeah, it's EVA. beautiful. I love that. So first cast, I did not completely backlash. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start off with this bait. Uh, if you can see it in the sunlight, old school Power Pack Shad, and a nice black shore minnow. <laughs> it's either gonna catch a fish or scare every fish that's here. I know which. I always like that color too. I do like a black shore minnow. Yeah. Ted just uh, missed the fish because he's because uh, I made him throw a reel that you haven't thrown in how many decades? <laughs> More than I want. <laughs> to admit. Yeah, it's, it's like getting into a car that you haven't driven in a while. It's like, the, you know, everything's in, a, in the wrong place. Or like, I think I've owned this reel longer. I've had this reel, this reel's older than my last girlfriend. Ooh. How's that? <laughs> Either very old or very young. I don't know which. <laughs> Maybe a little of both. Before they had the Big Easy, this is what people burned over the top of grass. The Johnson Silver Barrel. Not the, in black. The black Johnson Silver Barrel. No, I'm the black Johnson Silver Barrel guy, but the silver or the gold. So why but, black? Um, it flashes enough that they see it, but it's still subtle enough that they're not sure what it is. So you get that bite, that reaction bite, like I better eat it before it disappears bite. So do you fish it on top? I can. That's the nice thing about it is I can fish it lower like a normal spoon or Johnson Silver Minnow, or I can literally throw it over the hydrilla and on the top and then kill it. This is the original Zoom Speed Worm, which is four inches and just has a flat like beaver style tail. And I have it, I don't even know how big that lead weight is. That's one of the bigger ones I have. That's like an ounce almost, three quarters. It's probably like yeah. quarter ounce. <laughs> yeah, like that's lead. It's lead. <laughs> but, um, yeah, before we had craws and creatures to flip, this was the thing, and you just drop it down in there, and then when you swim it back, that little tail kicks. Ooh. All right, so what do we got, your tackle box? So this is the box I prepared just for this trip. <laughs> that is not a new box, by the way. No, Did you no. get that at Cabela's or Bass Pro or, no? No, no not, neither one of those. <laughs> Sears Roebuck in 1952, maybe? Hold on, look at that. Woo! There's some goodies in there. There are some goodies in there. Um, I see a lot of goodies. So hold on, what's that crankbait? That's horrible. That, that's a new, old style Norman square bill. Oh, that's sweet looking though. I like yeah. that. That does, that's got an old school pattern. Yeah. Oh, ah, yeah. uh, I just asked uh, Gary what this is called. He sent it to me. But yeah, I know what that is. I just can't. Uh, I can never remember on camera. Remember? So we we talked about. We know what that is. These these two. Yep. The old this uh, could Bangalore. Be good. Like it. And this is what I'm gonna give you to tie on now. Snag with Sally. Sally. This is the original color I bought, the first one. Um, and it's yeah. We're gonna put a little trailer on it just to give it a little extra action, but you can fish it just like this. So these were the biggest grubs I had. Were the white ones but I wanted it slightly bigger, and I had these things. Ooh, a little, so it, little it, speed grub kind of looking thing. Yeah, it's out of the sales bin at Walmart, so it's good enough, right? So this is a Hildebrandt bait. They make the blades that everybody says are the best, but they actually make this good old Snagless Sally. Weedless inline spinner. And what were you saying about the history of this bait? Um, well, I'm just that it's, it is one of those Florida baits. Like before, there was a chatterbait. It was the Snagless Sally, and to this day, when pros come through Florida, they buy up all of them because they always work. And you can fish them in stuff like this in this hydrilla, and Kissimmee grass too is really good. But there's no hook keeper on here or bait keeper, so you got to put a little super glue if you want to put any kind of trailer on there. And you don't have to put a trailer on, but 
it's the same thing I do with spinnerbaits that if a bass opens its mouth near it, there's more mass for it to suck into its mouth. The Quantum 310 MG. Bought this brand new in <laughs> whatever, 1980 something. And this is actually the same, not the exact same rod because I broke it, but it was a replacement that I found a few years later. It's the Quantum Transmitter. It's one of those bottle shaped carbon rods. It's with the fancy gold reel seat. But yeah, this is the very first uh, baitcaster combo I ever bought from Gary at Gary's Tackle Box. And it still works. Let's see, make a task. Yep. Of course, my camera dies as soon as I hook one. <laughs> That's all right. That's why you got a can man with you. Yeah. Just maybe the third cast with the Rapala. Somebody just did a whole video about these, I believe. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think this I is... do like the snap on the front of that though too. That's yeah. a little pro move there. Um, this is the one that probably ate your worm. It's in Pro the same spot. Yeah, probably caught my fish. So that's uh, we'll put that one on the board for me then. That hook is not coming out. Yeah. It's old school. <laughs> there it goes. First bass of the day. Chunky little orange lake one pounder. You ready to go back, buddy? All right. Do you like the rig at uh, curl tail up or curl tail down? Uh, curl tail in the same match the hook. Yes. Point. Love it. Whatever, bend. Yes. Ooh, this is a. Uh, yeah, okay. That's the moccasin color. I'm digging that. I mean, there's a reason that the Florida staple is still around. Now, I remember when uh, Culper came out with pretty much morning dawn before morning dawn. I think they called it uh, coral or something. Yeah. But that's morning dawn, though, right? Pretty much. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen that color, but I remember it. It was, it was maybe a little bit more blue on the bottom. Yeah, maybe. Perhaps, but pretty darn close. Yeah. Totally agree. I got another one. Oh. Ted's got one. Smaller than the last one. Not smaller. It's fat. Wait, I got one too. Awesome. <laughs> I was reeling mine in. <laughs> Double. <laughs> Look at uh, that. Look at that. I was trying to get my worm in so that I could film Ted uh, catching a fish and well. Your first bass on the sea nymph. <laughs> my first bass on the sea nymph. <laughs> Uh, I've never had a doubler like that. That's a hoot. Right. <laughs> On the old 10 incher. Just hold yours up. <laughs> awesome. You just put it on. Mission accomplished. That's literally, that was first cast with the old culprit as well. Ah. <laughs> At first, I was like reeling in. I'm like, I think I got a weed. And then the weed started to jump. So, here we go. Nice little Orange Lake bass. Uh, first one on the trip for me. Nice. I like that little worm on there. Yeah, there's, I've used that little worm as a trailer so many times when I've run out of other trailers because I always have those worms with me. <laughs> especially half of them. Yeah, especially <laughs> if you've been getting bit on them. I like that. So buzzbait and spinnerbait, only time I still die, tie an improved clinch knot. Just a little FYI. Oh, very nice. Because it points a little forward more than the Palomar. Just keeps the line out of the blades a little bit better. And for those who don't know, what is Ted Lincoln's bite of the day? So, it is a series of one minute, hold on. <laughs> a series of little one minute or one and a half minute catches, basically, that I put out used to do it three times a week, now I do it twice a week. Well, as soon as I get my new hard drive, I'll go back to twice a week. And it's uh, just a way for me to finally give myself a project to put out 
all these awesome catches I got on video. Especially because I started filming with somebody else, so I had I was helping him make content, but I was like, I still want to put my stuff out there. So I do two a week, and at the end of every month, supposedly, it's been more like every three months, I'll do a recap of all the bites, show the video, break down what I was using, how I was fishing it, and where I threw it. So you get the full background on each bite at the out as a recap after you've watched all of them. So. And what made you start the channel? I tried to start a cable access bass fishing show in 1992 with somebody who actually went on to be the guy who pioneered live broadcasting for FLW and became part owner of FLW. And he told me later on, he's like, the first time anyone proposed filming bass fishing was you. So I've always wanted to have a TV fishing show. I don't know, it just seemed like something I needed to do. And, and then I discovered YouTube fishing, had a GoPro, um, didn't know what I was doing. I have a brother who's a MFA in film and a video editor. Between that and meeting a couple other YouTube fishing guys, I finally was like, the bite of the day, I can do this. And so I needed something that had structure because as an artist, my, my schedule's up and down and deadlines but if I have two one minute videos a week I have to get out I'll do it and then when I have enough content to make the recaps I started doing the recaps so and what's your sub count at now uh, I'm at 800 something right there yeah I haven't ever asked for a subscriber or a like ever in a video I just figure if you like my stuff and want to watch more of it you'll subscribe um, definitely got a few bumps from Retro Bassin naming me. I did a DIY that Fishing and Stuff put out and that gave me a lot of extra followers. But if you fish in this part of Florida, um, or actually the California Delta, it turns out, you should watch my content. Or if you just like seeing Florida bass fishing. Or if you just like sweet old school shirts that say world's greatest fisherman. Is that a vintage shirt? It is. I bought this in a thrift store probably 15 years ago. <laughs> that, that is probably the most glorious shirt I've ever seen. Look at, he's he's ahead of the game. Look at, <laughs> look, at, look at all graphs he has. No, that's... <laughs> he's got a, so, he's got a, a radar, or a whatever, a satellite dish. It's live scope right there. Yeah. Randy Block would be so upset. <laughs> kind of looks like Randy Block at the... <laughs> it's pretty much the most magical shirt I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I when I was trying I, I honestly tried to score a nice one piece Bassmaster jumpsuit in the week since I knew you were coming and unsuccessfully <laughs> in that project but I did reach out to people who might have one and then I was like what can I wear to fish with Chris and I was like where's my world's greatest fisherman uh, it's a honeymoon shirt when I wore this in art school people thought I was being ironic <laughs> well it's late in the day and the sun's getting low and I think the Ray-Bans are coming off <laughs> trying to get a final bite of the day. Ted and I have uh, three fish so far. He's uh, he's beat me two to one. So he's throwing a top water, and I'm sticking with this culprit worm. It's, I'm not uh, just throwing any top water. <laughs> Show him the... All right, he's not just throwing any top water. <laughs> he's throwing this. <laughs> Apparently, there's musky in Orange Lake. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh my god. That's a good fish. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look at oh, that. Oh man. <laughs> I was just watching the lure, seeing if it was working, and it works. Pull the string. It's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's pulled. It's pulled. It's oh, stuck in his throat. Oh my goodness. I think he might have broke the lure. That's all now right, it's though. kicking now. So you, I, you can just hear it going. <laughs> I just decided to put on one of Chris's lures just to end the day. And I literally stopped it right by the boat to see the tail action. And so did he. I love that the catch of the day came on the old school lure. Wow. <laughs> the old school lure you brought. Cause <laughs> nice fish, best fish of the day. A little release. There we go. There you go, you got some action. <laughs> All right, Bass and Buds, well, there is uh, some lightning in the distance, so we were probably gonna get off the water, but uh, so awesome that Ted caught <laughs> the catch of the day, 
on an old school power pack lure. Thanks again, Ted, for having me out on the Sea Nymph. It was an absolute blast. And uh, as soon as we get down to Florida full time, you can guarantee we'll be uh, hopefully on this beautiful blue boat more often. Until next time, guys, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school.